and um, ROI may be the best way to measure that. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Senator Lujan. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to our ranking member for this hearing. Um, Dr. Earls, in your testimony, you discussed research about research into how farms and workers can utilize AA technologies to monitor livestock health, provide nutrients, project climate, and control irrigation. Yes or no, is there a workforce ready to fully develop and operate these technologies so that farms across the nation can fully benefit? Thank you, I think it's a great question. Uh, again, I, it really depends on which crop we're probably talking about, but across the board, I would say that the tech, no, the workforce is probably not as there in specialty crops, for example, as it may be where we have manual, much more manual labor. And so there's a lot more difficult types of tasks humans are doing. Uh, I think maybe we're closer on the front where we already have major penetration of mechanization. Uh, so in some of the row crops and things like that, where maybe there's less manual labor. Um, I think that's probably the biggest differentiator in my mind of what, what drives readiness for the workforce. Right I appreciate that. And Madam Chair, I think that's just a, a reminder that, that the committee not lose sight of the human component here as well as this conversation continues to, to grow. Um, Dr. Earls, California has a large Spanish-speaking population, as does New Mexico. Are efforts being made to make AI-enabled agricultural technologies easy to use by non-English speakers? Yeah, I think this is, I'll speak from an example in this case. I think if they, if someone's not doing this, then the technology is not going to make, penetrate the market. And so what would I've you, seen- Would you repeat that? Yeah, I think if there's not an effort to make Spanish first or at least bilingual in these tools, especially in specialty crops where we have predominantly Spanish speaking workers, then the tools are unlikely to succeed. And I've seen this firsthand in grape and wine industry uh, where people building tools internally are Spanish mode first. Right, and so yeah, I think it's a appreciate it, Dr. Hammond. Would you agree with that? I would. Is Deer doing it? We do, um, from an operations perspective, and in, in all of our equipment, the ability to operate the equipment exists in multiple languages. Spanish being one of them. To operate, what about the AI component of all the smart stuff you all build into your tractors? Yeah, I and think farm equipment. What we build into the tractors to this point has been largely visual. It's uh, it's machine learning, image recognition. Uh, so it's language agnostic in a sense. I appreciate that. I look forward to learning more about that. Um, Mr. Christian, your firm helps identify and develop AI technologies in the agricultural sector. How can companies like yours work with Congress and other government agencies to ensure that full diversity of American farmers and farm workers have a say in the development and deployment of AI agricultural technologies? including a new generation of farmers and those that have been historically excluded from, from farming. I think our hope is AI um, can improve and democratize access to information, networks, and knowledge, and create a more level playing field. Um, in order to do that, you need to have smart policy and partnership with the private sector. I appreciate that very much. Do Dr. Hammond, there's been several conversations, questions around broadband connectivity and the importance of access, especially um, along the last acre, which I'm proud to be working on with Senator Fisher, um, talking about last acre connectivity. The idea here is to expand network connectivity across farmland and ranch land to ensure our rural communities and smaller farms can benefit from the emerging technologies. You have deployed precision agricultural technology, DEER has, that allows for plant level management. Now, yes or no, does every rural community in America have access to the wireless networks needed to support that level of precision ag? It does not. And how important is it to expand connectivity to allow that to occur? Ultimately important. Uh, I appreciate that. And I, Madam Chair, this is a question that I know many of us have been asking and pursuing, especially those of us that represent more rural areas and more rural communities. With the commitments that were made with the bipartisan infrastructure bill with broadband, there was a commitment made that everyone was gonna get connected. All of it was going to happen. But as a former utility commissioner, I pay attention to the filings at the FCC. And there are several of those companies that have been submitting those filings. One of them, I think, used a, uh, 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 an adage of, well, what about someone that lives down a long dirt road? What if it's too expensive to connect them? I thought that was the idea of the bill. 
I live down a long dirt road. I'm sure a few of us do. And it's just one of those reminders that if we're going to live up to the promise, especially in this particular space of AI to help food production, improve profit, profits um, for, for farmers and producers across the country, that they need to have that simple technology that takes advantage of spectrum uh, to be able to utilize these, these tools. So I, I hope that that's something else that we can impress upon. And then Dr. Hinman with, with deer, and, and I appreciate your response on the threat actors having access to data. Now, my, my question is, does deer sell the data that they collect? Do they profit? Do they use a third party? Or does deer keep that information just to themselves for, for their own product improvement? We do not sell it. We're approached routinely by others who would like access to it. Our response is you have to go get approval from every farmer who has data that you're interested in. I want to thank you for that. I know that that's a tough decision, but especially as you're protecting the intellectual property, behavior, whatever it may be, or the confidence with those users as well. So I, I just want to, to thank Deer for that and, and, and for your response there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, thank you very much, Senator Lujan. And let me just say that they used to say that uh, it was too expensive to collect the farmer, put the farmer at the end of the road in, into telephone or, or electricity, and somehow we managed to do that. And so I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Senator Thrun. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just as a follow-up to Senator Lujan's uh, comments on some of these, there, there are tens of billions of dollars available. And yet, I met last